Hi, Mystery Writers. Today, I wanted to focus on getting ready to begin to commence, and that's before you write a scene and thinking about what your scene is and how it works in your story. Because scenes are the building blocks of your story, and each scene moves the story forward. And as you build your story, you can alternate between action and reaction scenes. But before you write a scene, you need to know the basic structure of the type of scene that comes next in your mystery. So, and then after you've written your scene, you can use checklists to make sure your scene meets the story requirements. So first let's look at the two types of scenes. Uh, action and reaction. And you can alternate between those proactive and reactive scenes to build your story in increments. You know, first, your protagonist sleuth does something, right? And that's the action. And then your sleuth has to deal with the consequences of taking that action, and that's the reaction. And both types of scene incorporate conflict. You need conflict in every scene, but the conflict is different depending on the type of scene. So let's look at the difference, all right? First, the proactive scene. You want to challenge your protagonist. I call these trigger scenes, and they move the story forward by involving your sleuth in a problem. Your sleuth has a goal. She has to achieve the goal, but obstacles challenge her as the scene moves forward. And at the end of the scene, there's a setback. By the end of the scene, the protagonist has not only failed to reach their initial goal for that scene, but has a setback that leaves them worse off than they were before. So. Let's look at a checklist for that proactive scene. Number one, who is the primary point of view character in the scene? For some mystery writers, it isn't always the sleuth who is the point of view character in each scene. So mainly you need to stay with that point of view character throughout that entire scene. And then what is that primary character's goal at the beginning of the scene? Um, and because it's just, just a scene, as it were, you want to keep that goal simple and clear for that scene. And you want to create some objective for that goal so it helps your reader visualize what that goal is going to be and what the success is going to be for your character. Um, and of course, you want to make that goal worthwhile. Otherwise, just cut the scene. So one, you need the goal, and two, you need to make it worthwhile for your story. The other thing is you want to make that goal achievable from that point of view character's perspective, that they believe they can achieve the goal. But at the same time, you want to make it difficult to achieve. So that's how you create the conflict that keeps your character from reaching the goal. And even with obstacles, don't, you don't let your um, character give up and make the obstacle unexpected, but also logical within the story. Um, I'll talk about logic and plot holes, and so your whatever is happening in your scene needs to be logical within the story context. So you want to put your hero or heroine in uh, bad situations, worst possible situations, as they seek what seems like an attainable goal at the beginning of the scene. 
okay, once, once they've been thwarted at the end of that scene, they need to respond to what just happened. And that is the reactive scene. Um, it's time to give your character some space, as it were. And this scene is where your hero or heroine makes a decision about what to do next. Um, you're going to start this scene with their reaction to what just happened. Uh, and, and now you want to get your character to figure out what to do next because what they tried before didn't work, right? And if the setback was significant and this happens toward the end of your story, he may he or she may have no apparent options and he needs to look at the dilemma and choose an option. So a lot of um, what happens in the reactive scene is figuring out what that next option is going to be. And then that decision, that option that they choose, is the goal for the next action scene, if that makes any sense. So let's look at a checklist for the reactive scene. Um, you want to clarify the character's vision of the problem. What, even if you, the writer, and the reader think that's not the problem, what you're doing in this scene is clarifying the character's view of what the problem is, all right? So your character needs to know what the problem is before they can make a decision. And you want to keep the reader with that point of view character uh, by visualizing what the character will do next, what their options are, how they think about their options. And the decision for the next action should be in line with your character's personality and values. So once again, you're checking the logic of the scene. Um, and then you want to give the reader a glimpse of how that character now visualizes their new success on achieving their new goal and make the decision difficult enough that the reader has doubts about whether your character can actually do what they decide to do. So it's a little bit different perspective in the reactive scene than it is in the uh, proactive scenes, but reactive scenes provide a way for your character to make really bad decisions, which will create greater conflict in your story. And they, it, for example, they may be blind to the motivations of another character, or they can find that getting into the boardroom isn't a slam dunk. Well, reactive scenes are your opportunity to build conflict and tension because the following action scene may be based on a very wrong decision on your character's part. It seemed right at the time for the character in that reactive scene when they made their decision, but it may lead to not such great consequences. Okay, so it sounds pretty simplistic formulaic to alternate between um, proactive and reactive scenes, but as you write them, you'll discover that it doesn't feel that way as far as the story is, con say, is concerned. It, it can feel forced, um, uh, but what this does is it keeps your story moving forward and it keeps building the tension. Readers want and expect your characters to have problems. They wouldn't be reading your story if your character didn't have problems and conflict, right? And they need to overcome those obstacles and they can make poor choices. And, and unless you're very compulsive, you don't need to write these uh, lists down of the obstacles. You just want to keep going with 
they took this action and then there was a consequence and then they have to deal with the consequence. So basically you just need to know which type of scene you're writing and create the obstacles, either action or decision making and write the scene. Um, conflict, physical, psychological, or mental in each scene keeps your reader engaged. So alternating those scenes will help you create conflict in each scene and keep your reader turning pages. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, I, I know that for beginning writers that alternating between proactive and reactive scenes can seem formulaic, but you'll actually find as you're writing these scenes that they don't feel that way, that there's something happens, it's a big conflict, and there's a result, and then your character has to deal with that result and make new decisions, and then take action again. All right, I hope that helps, and keep writing. I'll see you next week.